<laughs> oh, I have notes somewhere. Good, good point. Hello, everyone, and welcome. It's the second episode of this playtest where Daniel runs off to look for notes. Uh, I am Andrew. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. I am the designer of this game we're playing, uh, and so I'm always real nervous. Uh, but these are my lovely players. We'll start with Luke. Would you like to introduce yourself? Why am I always first? Because you, you, your portrait is right next to my portrait. Okay, that's fair. Um, good morning. <laughs> Thank you, Ash. That was what I was look angling for. Uh, uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Luke. My pronouns are they, them. I am a professional GM, a game designer, a cast member on other Twitch shows. Also, I host a podcast now, I guess. Yeah, you do. Yeah, That's I'll amazing. talk more about that later on, I guess. And I'm going to be a magical girl today. That's me. Uh, Kira, who is the next one down. I'm pointing vaguely at you here. Yeah, that I'm person. I'm Beverly here. <laughs> I, can't, I can't look at the screen because my computer is so old and, and slow. But if I run too many things, it's, it's a bad idea to look at the screen. Same. <laughs> <laughs> so, so hi. Thanks for introducing me. I'm Kira. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm a queer cyborg game designer. I live in Columbus, Ohio, so it's getting on evening for me. Uh, and I just ran my first my first game that I'm creating online. It's called Sync, and I ran How'd it on go? Play, and it went great. Thank you for asking. We had a lot so of fun. Good. So good. I'm glad. I'm, go yeah. I'm so keen to go and catch the vods. I'm so keen about this game. I am too. Thank you. It is. It is a nonviolent activist feels focused cyberpunk game and it's powered by the apocalypse it's more like monster hearts than blades in the dark so. okay i don't care for cyberpunk but i am 110 percent on board with this game <laughs> yeah it sounds really great every, everything else about it i'm like fuck yeah it is really fun and everyone loves it so far so i'm really happy about nice. that so that's that's me cool so then on this side there's ash the lovely ash hello my name is ash uh my pronouns are she her um, I'm a game designer and also a Twitch streamer who runs role-playing games on her channel. Um, and I spent all morning looking at pictures of Dan Natalie Dolma. So just a normal morning for you, then? Normal morning. Any morning. Okay, and then down here below is Daniel. Hi, uh, I'm Daniel. I use uh, he, him pronouns. And uh, I don't produce anything or stream anything or do anything though i do design and edit role playing games so there's that but yeah that that is of at least equal merit to these other things um so today we'll be resuming our uh game of carbon moonlight in a maze of dreams and we are most of the way through all the character creation co-creation shit um and i believe after much discussion and hammering into the details of it we settled on what we liked for avatars last time like a kind of broad aesthetic that they would fit into mm. um and so does anyone want to summarize maybe luke who was our bookkeeper okay so also i apologize for briefly running off I realized that with all our talk about being crisscrossed by wire so i had to fix that so the nature of the conspiracy as an ideology turned virus, its impulse is to drive us to self-destruction. Uh, the host is an online Geshult. The conspiracy like originated <clears throat> offline and then was uploaded and like control was lost of it. And now it's its own thing. The vector of infection is fashion and ritual. The waking world is crisscrossed by wires and defined by the press of bodies. Our dreams are shaped by conformity and possessions, and we hide from others' intimacy and our dissatisfaction. We breach the barrier of dreams to understand our waking lives. I got to zoom in because I started writing real small here. <laughs> okay, they, look, Andrew, there's not the the dream call. It needs to be bigger. There's not I enough mean, room to answer all three questions. This is true. This is Playtesting true. feedback. Yeah. Uh, we pass our days in dirty, grueling work. We're at like a technical college where we have to do like work experience. And because we are small, we are sent into like tunnels and pipes and it's dangerous and bad. Um, the dream is shared by everyone and no one or something like that. 
Uh, we know we're in the dream because uh, it's the only time you ever get to be all totally alone. But the detritus of other people's dreams in, like intrudes into your dream space. We find our way in the dream by following the wires and we move through the maintenance spaces and crawl spaces. And our unconscious tell is that we leave a mark on the things that we touch in the dream. And our avatars, an avatar is a cobbled together aesthetic made from pieces of other people's dreams. It conceals the dark secrets of those dreamers and wants to have a life of its own. Cool. And that is my summary. Okay, that feels that feels good. My memory is some pretty cool ideas. I just gotta say that. <laughs> yeah, we well, we're good at this game. Fuck yeah, um, so far. And so the next thing that we're going to talk about, uh, if everyone's feeling suitably grounded back in this fictional space, um, next up is talking about our transgressions. So how uh, the did characters... we finish? Did we finish creating our avatars, Andrew? Mm, maybe we didn't. Because I don't didn't actually. I, I don't know that we did. Do we we, we of... established some of it, but not. I'm not sure if we established all the things. Our first yeah, and I don't know if anyone wrote it. them down anywhere, which. I feel is an important step. Should sure. we pick them? Uh, we do we not write them down? Um, I don't see them written down anywhere on this sheet. Is all I can yeah. say. But uh, they would be. Fire. That's something you're going to write on your own character sheet. So everyone has one assigned. Um, yeah, I've got elegant morbid. And oh, so cool! You've got it up at the top. There's like a bio info tab, a character sheet tab, and an attributes and abilities tab. You're going to want to stick to the character sheet tab and maybe the bio and info one. Uh, the character sheet has a section for notes in the bottom left um, and a place for you to store all of your abilities, your name, your look, all that stuff. You can fill it in. Um, and if folks need help navigating this, just let me know and we'll... I do, but... Oh, where, where are we even talking about? We'll get yeah, so, we'll, okay, we'll, yes. we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. <laughs> right. So in the top right of roll twenty, there is a row yes. of buttons above the like yep. rolling space. I found them. Yes. And so the third one from the left will be the journal, and in the journal there are character sheets, and everyone. It's the one that looks. It's the one that looks like a newspaper. Mine yeah. says Vunkudu Doom. Yeah. So it assigns you a procedurally generated name for your character. Oh, <laughs> oh I see. That's that's um, that's actually the character Esu Tikio. I was like. Yeah, that's your, that's your character name, name everyone. Uh, and you're, so you have to commit now. to the no. Um, if you I'm want, into it. That's fine. if you want to change that, there's an edit button in the top right that'll let you change the kind of broader attributes and like attach an image and all this kind of crap. Um, gotcha. And then there's also like within the character sheet tab inside your character sheet, there's a spot to put your names, uh, your pronouns, yeah. look, etc. So there's all of the stuff that you should need. Yes, um, I see it now. Okay, great. Uh, so that's where we're going to be storing things. Um, cool. And it has functionality built into it for doing the dice. So it can, like if you need to roll confess, you can click on the little die icon next to confess yeah. and it'll ask you to fill out the position and effect, which is typical cool. bladesy stuff. And then blah, 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 there's a macro and then I'm making someone else roll. Um, <laughs> but it'll output a little thing. Tells you what you got. With a beautiful image and everything. So Yay. So should we write our avatars in, in there in there right now? Or should yeah. we do that like, or, um, like whatever a Yeah, whatever stuff you've got, uh, feel free to like I would just say write in, in your notes. There isn't gonna be a yeah, specific that's where section it. for avatar just because that's like a unique mechanic to this uh, series that we're doing but is, is notes in the bio and info section uh in character sheet at the very bottom on the left hand column is okay got it notes. got it um and so yeah are folks keen to do that describing and naming now or would you feel more comfortable getting through the last bit of the questions and lists and whatnot and then drilling into characters I don't, i'm just like I like the flexible. idea of, of, of going through the rest of the list and then elaborating on our avatars. Okay, cool. Yeah, I need to warm up a little before. Yeah, great. All right, so we can answer some more questions then. We've got uh, in here, we have our transgressions. So how do we defy the dream's form and order is the first one. Where is this? Um, so the uh, list of questions is over on the far right, and then 
Luke will be recording it over and Oh, over so we're just answering, there aren't options. To there aren't options one. to these ones. These ones are more <laughs> open. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how do we defy the dreams? Well, we're, we're, we can move the, the tubes around and stuff, right? Because yeah. we're like smart tube yeah, mechanics. Yeah, we can pass between. I feel like that already, yeah, I was going to say, is totally an element of y'all defying the kind of structure, like the form of the dream, because you go backstage um, and into like maintenance conduits of it um, and i feel like kind of on that note like the one of the things that shapes the dream and defines the dream is the idea of like uh this this like idea of conformity and like the fact that everyone is alone in their dreams but we are often together mm -hmm. and so in that way like we defy the shape of the dream mm -hmm. uh daniel yeah i mean that was one thing i was gonna say one thing is that normally you you're only you're the only person in your dream but we can be in other people's dreams. Yeah, that's, that's like very cool. transgressive as well. Thing. The other thing on the conformity topic is uh, we have, when we are in other people's dreams, we still look like ourselves. We have our own look, right? Mm. Our own aesthetic that we bring into other dreams. Normally, if someone else appears in my dream, they're not really them, right? They're, they're a representation from my mind. Yeah. And then the third thing I was going to say is we talked about our look being cobbled together of objects and things from other people's dreams. And possessions in dreams that we are kind of important, right? Because they're important in our yeah, yeah, exactly. They help like so we have other people's possessions. We steal things that aren't ours in dreams, where they're the most important things. So that seems like a big transgression too. So, yeah. so what I, what, I, what I'm hearing is, uh, we we like we move through the dream in ways others cannot. We can enter the dreams of others and like share space in the dream as others cannot. And we take things from other people's dreams, which is bad. It sounds like you're Quote, breaking unquote. every rule that we have established. <laughs> We're rebels. Yeah. Also, and also, like, like and we, also, whenever we touch the dream, we change it. Yeah, right? like, like obviously why? It. Yeah, we're 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 dreamwalkers from uh, the Last Witch Hunter. Calda, you are in a dream. <laughs> I don't. It is, it's but... Ash's favorite trashy movie. Oh, I did it with Vin Diesel. I know what you're talking yeah. about now. <laughs> At the Rebel Girl song like came into my head when we started. We were like, we're, we're transgressive. We're super transgressors. We're rebels. There's a bit of a punk aesthetic going on here, certainly. Yeah. We're transgressors. Yeah. Oh. Also, also yes, that. Also that. Uh, okay. So then <laughs> the next question is, what truths do we share only with each other? Hmm. So what is what is our like secret stuff that we permit our friends to see, but no one else? Because we talked about how in the society uh, everyone hides, like conceals their acts of intimacy. They aren't. No one is like openly intimate, or like openly acknowledges their intimacy with others, uh, and people hide their dissatisfaction. So everyone hates the world, but trudges through it stoically or whatever. Um, and so these are these questions are meant to kind of be a counterpoint to these the previous questions of what shapes the dream and what do we hide from others so that can be a good way to frame I'm, I'm here. interested in like uh, in a thing here Andrew is this season two or something because like oh yes sorry so an important bit of framing that I like to do uh, when playing Girl by Moonlight is the pitch that rather than declare that we are playing season one to say that this is season two of a show. Uh, and so there is some space behind where we start playing to kind of backfill and use as we need to. Um, it also means that we do away with any of the stuff where like, if there's a time traveler, we don't have to have the bit where they're like, what is a toaster? How does a computer work? You know, like we can just, we just skip all that shit, all the setup and whatever we kind of uh, enter in with this sense of like, the feeling that we have established relationships and the feeling that there has been one arc that has set up this one, um, which we can freely inject content into as we need it kind of on the fly. So if that appeals and doesn't wreck anyone's vibes, uh, I propose that that is a technique we continue to use. That sounds great. Let's skip those uh, origin stories. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Well, and so the reason I think this fits here is that we've talked about a few things 
in folks's backstories that feel like very season one material yeah season like, season one was when we rescued daniel's character from the weird cult right like, daniel's like that, character that all happened in season one entangled in the cult and was like a suspect victim whatever uh maybe there was some stuff with luke's character being like brought in as part being of the, sad like, the end of that yeah. first arc right of you yeah probably things. yeah um some stuff like that there might be yeah i mean i'll say i think that's a great idea generally for the game mm -hmm. um and even for our game yeah i was gonna say i had some ideas about my character being having gone through a specific set of transitions recently yeah so maybe it's simply a matter of like like lucas saying my character was introduced halfway through last season yeah exactly as a, right as a as like a plot point and then became oh the fans love that character they're so ever yeah exactly uh, and we, we did we did that like significant time jump between season one and season two where the writers are just like cool okay episode one we're just plunging into like everything's very different now fans just like go with it you just gotta trust us <laughs> we know what we're yeah, doing I mean, probably then i'll just be making a, a fairly liberal use of the backfill element yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, and that's half, that's half the point of this technique is yeah. getting to be like, ah, yes, in season one, blank totally happened. Yeah, I and, think we should we should share our personal dreams with each other. I that's yeah, that's really cool. I also like the idea because when we were talking about intimacy, there was also some discussion of like authenticity. Like, yes. I feel like when it comes to like our gender presentation and like when it comes to those parts of ourselves that conformity forces us to keep hidden like we share those things authentically with one another yes i kind of like the idea of our personal dreams still being off limits to each other actually is, our personal is, dream being off limits you said yeah is there like a mutual respect where y'all like permit each well, other that space you, you asked to be invited maybe that's the thing so maybe yeah well, this is this is the sharing intimacy uh, downtime action, right? Is like one of the kinds of intimate moments that we could share is like, hey, do you want to share dreams together? And they can either express their boundaries or do whatever the other option is. I don't remember. So yeah, like I, I like this idea of that being something that some of you guys do, but that it's not like willy nilly and assumed that there is still room for folks to have those yeah. boundaries. When the yeah, I'm, I guess I'm, maybe what I, I'm actually saying it would be cool if you guys did that, but my character has not done that yet or something like that. I mean, but yeah, like that that's the thing that I also want to explore. Um, yeah, because Ash, you're also playing the outsider, right? So Yeah, exactly. So and I want to make That's a cool that. tool, yeah. And that for Ash's character, uh, she has not accepted her identity yet. Exactly. So... Like, yeah, like he can't... He's in that yeah. transitionary space and is having yeah. a lot of discomfort around it, so maybe for him yeah. it would be more off limits to have folks come in because it would be more of a breach um, mm. so, yeah. so like so we pick something else then so that we're so all with yeah. with con yeah. with consent our personal dreams i think it would be good to pick something complementary to that or something that's a, that that would be included under maybe but... oh what if what if we're all like super like anarchists anarcho-socialist commune and we share all of our possessions freely among one another oh gosh i think we could share outfits clothes. that's a night that's an actual nightmare though oh yeah no i can i can imagine i can imagine in practice i can imagine in practice that would be a bad idea but like <laughs> yeah. because like possessions is such a like key thing i like the idea of us like not being precious about it in the same way that society uh, is like yeah I ownership like is really important yeah we're like yeah, like, like you want to borrow my clothes? That's cool. I don't fucking like, care. Like, yeah, like, like borrow clothes. Take it a step further. Like, sometimes we share form, right? Like, we're, we're like, hey, do you want my cool hands? Like, Whoa. to me, this really, I mean, maybe this is this, my interaction is like this interacts with the, how our avatars function, like in a weird way to me. That like, is, maybe it's interesting, but my it's initial awesome. impulse is like that doesn't make sense to me. If our avatars are formed out of these objects that we've collected that are like intrinsic to our self identity. That to me suggests that we still value possessions. Maybe in so. Way. To my to my mind, Daniel, um, and this may just have been me making assumption, like because those we took those objects from dreams. Those objects are only like extant objects in the dream. Yes. Like in our mundane lives, those objects just don't have form. Like they don't yes. exist. Also, and so also, I'm talking like mundane life, where like, wait, you want to borrow like my jacket? Like totally, go. But for this it. is what we share in the dreams, isn't it? Or is it, or is it in general? Yes. 
Does uh, it say in So this reach? is, the question is, what truths do we share only with each other? We're thinking hard about this one. Yeah. Okay, so we've, we've drifted a bit then. <laughs> what truth, so specifically what truths do we share only with each other? I think, the only thing that I'm, I'm really interested in is fear. Um, Our fear. Like what, what like fears and anxieties we can share. Um, like it's our discontent, I guess, to a certain degree. But um, yeah, what dissatisfactions with our lives? Yeah, or... yeah, it's like our ability to be vulnerable. I, mm. I feel yes. like that yeah. connects both of those elements that we chose for the "what do we hide from others?" Right, the idea of yeah, like, an act of good. vulnerability is inherently intimate, and that dreams are often in response to you know, like you want things you want to change or things that you want to move beyond or whatever um does that sound okay for folks that sounds good to me it's yeah little... my impulse would just be like why don't we just say our dissatisfactions and, and go from there and, I, yeah. and that implies intimacy as, as you just said so yeah that sounds cool good. great so y'all mm -hmm. actually like talk about that stuff to each other and have i imagine this is the like youthful aspirations conversation as well of like what do you want to do after yeah. you get out of this shitty technical college? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, and so then the last question for this is, what would happen if anyone else found out? And this applies to both the previous ones. So if people found out about our defying the dreams form and order, what would happen? Um, and if... we, we would be replaced by, uh, like small children who do not define yeah. like we talked about us all being interchangeable in the eyes of society yeah yeah we Andrew, would be replaced what was the second thing you were going to say about um and so the other one is like what consequence would there be if people found out that y'all were so close i guess that, like your friendship that you have that is special in this way uh of like emotional vulnerability etc like that is yeah. that is inherently transgressive of the society. Normal people don't aren't friends. Don't that do that. Way. Um, they are. Yeah, I mean, I feel I feel like same whatever. same answer. Yeah, like I think yeah, so. like se I think separated and replaced. Yeah, is like the key things, yeah. the key thing. Daniel, if people are on board with that. Yeah, I I I think being concrete about it, I think we would be split up, and I think some of us would be we would be institutionalized or made vulnerable to the institutions of our society. Yeah. So depending on our class background is how I'm basically imagining this, depending on our background, some of us would just be sent to other schools. Some of us would be, our parents would steal them away. Some of us would literally be incarcerated. Some of us, you know, depending on- Yeah, my, so go into separated, like deeper Separated, so. re-educated and replaced. Exactly. Right. Cool. Fucked up, right? Serious consequences. <laughs> the old school- I'd like, to... To, I'd like to resist that consequence, Andrew. <laughs> luckily in this game you can do that uh okay cool and yeah that's that feels very like true to life to me this idea of a school system funneling people that stand out into other institutions that are like troubleshooting institutions for the broader cultural stamping machine yeah uh okay and so then the last question or set of questions is the dreams end uh and Ooh. so these are the like big like meta arc kind of questions so what will be left of the waking world should the conspiracy devour the dream i really like a, a like the image of uh, of like this space that had all of the wires and the press of bodies just being devoid of bodies like suddenly it, yeah. there just aren't people there Be yeah be because the impulse is to drive them to self-destruction like what will be left is the waking world and all the people will not be around anymore. Uh, Daniel or Kira? I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, um, imagine the dreamscape with you know, concrete buildings, empty spaces and leaves passing through and a bunch of possessions. Everyone's up. I just think once things will be left behind. Yeah, right. Yeah. The they will be gone. By... They will be absent. Yeah, I, I think that's this, really I, nice. I have this image of like a crosswalk where like there aren't any people, but for some reason the crosswalk button like just goes off and like the, the light would... changes, the signals yeah, go. The light These... like, yeah. No one there. Like almost as if the waking world is still being like kept in the imitation of people by the dream somehow. But... Yeah. Like like the world is sleepwalking. 
the city yeah they're like yeah. the city survives haunted by absence or something like it's like that shot in the twin peaks opening sequence of the light changing colors and Sorry. I've I've never seen uh, Twin it's, Peaks. It's really good. That sounds I, like exactly the right mood. Yeah. To me hashtag nice. mood. Hashtag mood. <laughs> okay. We got that one. So that was that was very quick. That's yeah. nice. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, if our dreams were free of the darkness, what might we wake up to find? So this is kind of like the inversion of the other question. Ooh, togetherness. Sometimes. Yeah, I think we will wake up next to people. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The, great. The, the, like waking up with someone beside you, the, and like, or like some, or, or like we, the, and like oh. maybe a little coffee. I don't yeah. know why that's that's the thing, but yeah. Someone making breakfast. There's yeah. like a breakfast feeling to that. Yeah. Yeah. Int intimacy and like sharing spaces. The, the world like... will be like a cozy place. A warm oh, place. Oh yes. Right? My like heart. Gonna, it'll go into that kind of aesthetic space instead of this yeah. like crushing like because i mean the imagery of the press of bodies crisscrossed by wires is totally like an entrapment right like mm -hmm. the camera yeah, well, has imagine... the wires between it and the people and the people are all herded together yeah i think about the press of bodies like like the cuddle puddle or like there's mm. going to a going to a club and going to a party of your friends mm. and dancing with your friends and dancing with strangers you know like yeah it can be the, it'll be the same but the, the, the but the wire the wires are about different. like yeah, the wires the are wires about like connected, connected yeah. connectedness and in internet intimacy, and the press of bodies will be about like hugs and like being physically like intimate with yeah. Right. That's so real good. It's real good. The world won't appear to change, but the context or the tone of it. The will emotional be tenor will yeah. shift. Great. Yeah. It feels very on brand. So, the final step is to choose a name for the series. That reflects these answers. So this is us Ooh. naming the thing. Wow, Andrew, that's that's an easy one. For like, <laughs> the rest of the session, I think. Uh, so, like, good job. Thinking about wire dream, dreams of wires, wire cable thoughts, intimacy. I don't know. <laughs> Blueprints of intimacy. Well, that's good. It sounds like a cheesy soap opera, though. Yeah, like, that's into, okay. Is like, that in, such in, a bad thing? Yeah. Into into the dream web. Or something? How about birds on a wire for the Larry Shorter? <laughs> Hearts on a wire. Yeah, maybe something else on a wire. Oh, I like that one, actually. Honestly, yeah, like birds on a wire or hearts on a wire, I think, are, are both good. Hearts on a wire is pretty good. I think, yeah, the, I yeah, I think birds birds isn't hot punk enough. Hearts or spirit. Like, that's, uh, that's, that's Ashton's naming technique. He's just such and such heart or such and such spirit that's just my yeah. name okay so we'll just i like hearts on a wire hearts on I, a wire it seems I, it's a strong one give me a moment what do i write that down uh it's the top left of the place where things are being written oh, down. Prominent, I hope. it's a series name just oh yeah so like, it does picturing like a tote bag with like wires and <laughs> birds there's like little heart emojis yes <laughs> well, maybe they have wings because they're kind of like birds i don't know now i'm thinking really hard about like the the um our opening uh, aesthetic for the opening credit sequence yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah what the I like, imagine, title i might have wires in outline that come come in and out of like focus or in and out of the yes very spare but then there's so many people i don't know yeah it'd hmm. be so cool if we could make the opening credit sequence like actually make it <laughs> Only I, don't, I don't have the artistic <laughs> skills <laughs> either I can like go away and turn on my anime brain and like come up with a concept and pitch it to your next episode. But like, I made a flip book once. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So that's all of the series creation stuff done. We did it. Yay. Um, and We're I good think... at role playing games, everyone. We win. Yeah. We won. We win. So, uh -huh, yeah, we beat you, do, right? That's pretty much Yeah, we invented a nice version of this world. We win the game. <laughs> The intention is that it be on top of this line here so i'm just gonna oh. i'm gonna move some stuff around because i'm a game designer and i have an intentionality to my <laughs> okay yeah that's okay andrew but then where is the space for describing our avatars it's coming in the next version <laughs> it's important this is like good ux testing honestly you know? yeah because i've um, never yeah. had to and, fill these things did, in did, before did we did yeah. you create a character a shape character for us to put like all these things into I could do that, I suppose. Just a suggestion. Okay, well, I'm going to assign it to everyone. All players can be edited and controlled by all players. 
Chaos. Name is Wufa. Anarchy. Its name is Wufa Pro Day. Oh. Pro Day. <laughs> Wufa Pro Day. Is that a translation of Hearts on a Wire in our mythical? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, totally. Okay, so <laughs> I lied. There are two more decisions that must be made. Okay. Uh, one is to pick a crew ability mm -hmm. and then a transcendent oh. ability for the crew. Mm. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> Luke's just making sounds. Do you have a question? <laughs> you... No, I'm just excited. Can I have I a copy of the I link to the... I don't have a question. I was going to jump ahead and pick one arbitrarily. Oh, yeah. And Andrew, do you have a, do you have a link to the thing? To what thing? It's right it's right here. The document that has all of the They're stuff right here. Made? It's on roll 20. Right oh yeah, it's I, I I'm so I I I I've just like I've got such blinkered vision on the bit where I've been yeah. writing answers down that I've just forgotten the rest of it exists. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, Andrew made me a custom little bit where I could write things. Oh shit, right, there's a whole page. There's a whole <laughs> world good accessibility. you can scroll to. Yeah. Good accessibility feedback. Yeah. There'll just be a disclaimer, like, don't play this on a tiny laptop, you'll be sad. <laughs> um, yeah. So the options are uh, curiouser, each PC may add plus one action rating to forgive, express, or conceal. Uh, so just extra action dots. Uh, looking for answers, gain plus one die when you investigate the darkness. When a lead turns out to be a dead end, mark XP. Um, and that should say crew XP, but it doesn't. Uh, shared burden. If your social link action includes sharing your dark secrets or inner pains, clear two stress, and your ally marks one stress, they ask you one question from their gather info list. That's my vote. Um, another face in the crowd, gain plus one effect when concealing yourself in a crowd. When you defer to the majority, mark XP. Uh, daydreamers gain plus one die when rolling obligation. Uh, moment of crisis when a mission centers on a despairing NPC. Gain plus one die on your engagement roll. And gain plus one die when you help a friend recover from emotional harm. That's another good one. I, I feel like uh, shared burden and another face in the crowd are the most like thematically in sync with the world that we've created. Yeah, I'm feeling, face shared burden, um, I'm feeling Shed Burden, Curiouser, or Moment of Crisis. I do like Moment of Crisis. Those are also the three I was thinking of. I like Curiouser a lot, mostly because I think of my character as curious, but... Another face in the crowd is really too sad. <laughs> That's a fair point. <laughs> it, I mean, it's, it's a game about tragic magical girls, Kira. <laughs> I know, um, but I like these other sad options better. No, 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 that's the, no, that's that's that's, that's the, no, that's legit. That's legit. Uh, like, I I like either shared burden or moment of crisis. Yeah, there's something about shared burden. It's like you're you're taking action, like you're sharing your dark secrets. Like you, whenever you share a dark secret, so that prompts us. Speaks directly it. right back to that. Like what? Well, what of vulnerability. That? Yeah, I mean, I like both of them. They're definitely to me like. Uh, they're significantly different. Like what the, the theme of our is, are we about helping ourselves? Or are we about helping other people? That's to me what those two things are. Good I mean, point. we, we breach the barrier of dreams to understand our waking lives and not to like do yeah. any of the other things that other people are about helping people. Lives. Yeah, we decided we weren't superheroes, remember? Like, so yeah. we're not really helping other people. We're helping our, we're focusing on our inner circle, I think. Mm. Yeah, and Kira, oh, no, sorry, you. You go. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was. I'm done. Yeah, just just you were asking earlier. The like our the that answer to what truths do we share only with each other? Like the at the answers that we gave like point really directly at shared burden and the idea yeah. of like sharing that stuff with each other. So. I think that's also the most interesting one to me because I want more interactions with the PCs instead of with the NPCs. Yeah, well, cool. that sounds like a pretty good answer. Cool. Yeah, I'm into it. I think my characters can be bad at doing that, so I'm interested. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I would like to make a strong vote uh, as far as transcendent ability for just a dream. Okay. While you are transcended, others must speak to you truthfully. Ooh. And you ask an additional follow-up question when you gather info during an interrogation. Ask all the questions. I think that I, I'm really interested in that, especially because I will not have access to it because I can't transcend. Interrogations are intense. Though. Which means all of you can ask me questions and I will have to be honest about them. But I, I never get to return the favor. I really like dream logic, but it's very much about my character. So, because mm. uh, my yeah. character transcendence is going to be all about her past and her like, for her involvement with the conspiracy. So that's super interesting to me. You receive um, all applicable benefits. I love anything in any kind of apocalypse world slash blaze of dark 
slash game where you get to ask extra questions from a list. So I'm, I'm definitely down for just a dream in that sense. Yeah. In this sense, Daniel, I feel like you are very much an Andrew type player because we all know Andrew loves asking questions. So I mean, love this... lists also. That's so great. <laughs> Andrew, I know, I know. I'm trying to figure out what all these options are. Mm -hmm. Can you trigger Daniel... a flashback? Yeah, Daniel, the foundation of mine and Andrew's friendship is I wrote a Apocalypse World game that's only asking questions and lists. There you go. There's nothing else in the game except that. It's the only reason Luke and I get along. That's right. Yeah, yeah I wrote them a cool game once, and they're like, I guess I'll keep you around. <laughs> Hold Back the Nightmare seems pretty intense. No, yep. I don't understand what all these things do, but it seems intense. So Hold Back the Nightmare is about... Um, so there's Not going into the Darkest Self. Yeah, where once your stress track oh. fills, yeah, rather than in Blades where you would get trauma, in this game you go into Eclipse, which is like Darkest Self for Monster Hearts, and you start counting your stress down, and then when oh. that runs out, you just die. Oh. <laughs> um, and so this helps you kind of teeter on the brink for longer, um, oh. because rather than having a 1 in 6 chance of not falling to Eclipse or whatever, it becomes a 50-50. I also like the little second bit about uh, when you're transcended, you're scary as fuck. Oh yeah, and then and, if you're in Eclipse, then you're a huge yeah. badass. Yeah. And and as we all know, Andrew, even and Blades, even on a single die, oh yes, there's a fifty percent chance meme. of success. <laughs> I like going into darkest self, so I think I won't choose that one. Legit. Yeah, I think I feel like I feel like um, I feel like just a dream seemed to be the one that we were like. This is yeah. peaking the most interest. Right, yes. Like, it was the one um, that we all went, flashbacks. like, leaned into quickly. Um, and then, yeah. We can take them all eventually, also. I'm okay. cool with any or all of these. So if that's the one we're excited about now, let's do that. Cool, great. Um, and so now we can just focus on characters. Yay! Um, I think it's really interesting that, just a commentary on this one, it's only when we're transcended, which means when we're in our avatar form, which means in a way when we're the most constructed, because our avatars are built out of like mm -hmm. objects, and the, to me they're like they're it's like they're a look, right? But your look is somehow prompts authenticity from other people, which I think is yeah. interesting. I don't know, just random. Yeah, like like uh, objects prompt authenticity. Yeah. Yeah, like they're not speaking oh. to a person; they're speaking to a thing, and so they don't feel inclined to like feel the same way about. Or something. Blabbing yeah. the truth yeah. at it. Or we have, or we have authority because we're most ourselves, or who knows what it is. Also, uh, we all get to an ask Andrew the greatest question in the world every time an NPC says something. Is that the truth, though? Are Are they telling the truth? Yeah, that's good. Oh what God. is the? Truth? That's great. Um, and then, uh, y'all still have the PDF from last time for viewing all the character stuff. The... I've I've lost it. Oh, I have two. Could you okay? Let me I have email somewhere, I think. let me grab a link to it because I don't think it's the version on your um on your Twitter. no, it's a different version. What are all these other things on the side here? Are oh, these things I need... that we do like investigation, the darkness in our dreams, series rules. Like, yes, that stuff that comes up later. So this is all going to happen during play. Yeah. So investigation okay. is how the crew kind of. It's how we track how onto like on top of the darkness stuff the crew is. So if y'all are in a good place to actually know what's going on and pursue kind of more less reactionary uh, missions. Mm -hmm. um, so as this fills, you're going to be able to do more missions more kind of safely. It affects your engagement roles. Uh, and then the darkness in our dreams. This is like a countdown Cons kind of thing. Conspiracy progress clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so... Once this fills, bad things happen to the crew, uh, and you're kind of <laughs> in a race to yeah. get to the um, get to them first. Because uh, gotcha. when you do the tier three mission, expose the heart of the conspiracy, you face a host of the conspiracy in their dark dream and put an end to their plot, which then resets all the stuff. Cool. So there's this like race condition thing that goes on. Uh, and then the series rules are changes from the base game for this particular series. So in our case, the standard social link uh, action is replaced by share an intimate moment. Um, 
And so anything that would point at social link normally gives you like bonuses or penalties to share an intimate moment. Um, and then the rules for that are described there. Uh, and then also instead of, there's the bit about how instead of friends and enemies, the player, each player names two suspects. So those are NPCs that are connected to your character, um, but also are, they relate to the conspiracy in some way. And we don't quite know yet how. Mm. Um, and so we're cool. going to record all the NPCs down here in the bottom left of the crew sheet uh, in the conspiracy map. Okay. Conspiracy map. It's Does up... every playbook have a conspiracy map or just this one? Just this one. This is a special thing. Cool. Um, and so what their placement on this means is up to you guys to kind of develop a way that you want to structure it. Um, awesome. But yeah basically whatever like it feels right in the... yeah yeah we can we can bicker over how we want to fill it and whether <laughs> people's people closeness belong. is raid is is based on like just the intensity of their connection to the conspiracy or like how culpable they like maybe the further away people are victims and the closer in people are like pop... nudge slightly to the left slightly to the left yeah no. slightly to the left no no it wants to be over in the next cell we're, we're very particular i like it though um and so yeah like i'll leave it to y'all to decide how yeah exactly it's like your cork board or whatever else how you want to place people on this and what those the significance of those things are it's just awesome. a little workspace i want to place ash's character on it i suspect ash <laughs> I mean, ash is a suspect ash did nothing wrong luke nothing wrong uh, yeah because jet fuel can't melt steam steam beams. oh yeah okay <laughs> ash is innocent uh, here Hashtag we go. I've got my shareable was, link finally. Country. I know. <laughs> Ash, you're perfect, and you've done nothing wrong ever. So I put a link to the uh, PDF in the Zoom chat for y'all. Oh, it says uh, there's an error. Why is everything bad and broken? Sorry. Does it? Maybe try re. Maybe try reloading Kira because I I, will, I just okay. I just opened it. Um, okay. Didn't have an issue. It's not opening for me. A, it, it just hates you specifically. It's the Ohio awesome. firewall that doesn't no, permit gay stuff. It's, doing, it's, it's the doing Columbus doing firewall. Um, yeah. The Ohio wall. No, it's because of Ready Player One. This is where Ready Player One takes place. <laughs> I'm blaming it on Ready Player One. Mm. That is legit. Um, Kira, if you copy and paste it rather than clicking on it, it seems to work. Yes, that was my next move. But I thank you for your advice. Why is it? Yep, that worked. That's fine. Great. So uh the playbooks we have are kira is an enigma luke Ooh. you're playing an unlikely hero uh ash you're an outsider and then daniel uh, i can't remember what you're playing i'm sorry bad guardian <laughs> i'm a guardian guardian right subsuming your own need for recovery oh. and oh, helping right. others oh, to pretend that right. your trauma didn't happen right that's what it was, it was the... classic <laughs> classic tropes um and so i really i i just want to say again daniel i'm really into it like a plus don't play favorites luke it's not helpful <laughs> i didn't say the word favorite at any point yeah, there, Andrew. My character's the best. heavily implied so character playbook procedure uh how we want to do it is you're going to pull any relevant information from the series playbook and record it in the assigned spaces on your sheet so that's going to be your obligation detail, your role, um, anything that kind of maps. Your directly. avatar in this yeah, case. Yeah, like we have avatar stuff that we're going to pull in. Uh, obligation detail. Um, we know that we are all at this like technical college and that we do maintenance work. But it could be that like one of you is an instructor at the technical college or one of you is the janitor or whatever, right? Like how you fit into that shared thing. We talked about everyone being kind of peer, a peer group or whatever, but we can characterize that a little bit. Like someone can be head of the class, someone can be struggling you know, with their studies, someone can be the like rich kid who doesn't actually have to follow the rules. However you wanna fit into that section, you can characterize. So those go under role, like those so types of things? Yeah, because there's role, which we talked about. It's one of the things from the lists. Uh, let me just look at the section where we had roles. Okay. Uh, role, we had someone was the forbidden lover and best friend. Someone was a recovered victim, Oracle of the Dream, which I believe was Daniel's character. Okay. Uh, 
Ash, you were a tragic genius, object of desire. <laughs> right, and then Luke, you were disillusioned, cynic, weary, caretaker. Kira, you were forbidden lover, best friend. Yes. Yes, okay. And then, so I would put on best friend, forbidden lover, slash rich student. So yeah, best friend, forbidden lover are going to go into role, and then under obligation, it would be the whole like technical college thing, and then how you fit into that. Okay. Sorry, because I was kind of lumping ideas together there. Um, and so, do, 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 and then once everyone has done that, uh, you can assign an extra action rating on your sheet that relates to your role. Um, so each playbook starts with two dots already filled, and then you get to fill a third one in a different action um, based on... I like to just use roll as a hook for it. So if there's one that feels appropriate based on what your role is, you can fill that one in. I can go over the actions now if that would be helpful for folks. Uh, can I ask a question about obligation first? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, does obligation have to relate directly to the technical college? Uh, yeah, because it's meant to be something that's shared amongst the crew. Um, so it can it can be like a little bit outside of the core stuff, but I don't want it to be too far out because then it okay. just things don't feel sense. really disconnected. Um, and when picking these details, it's important to remember that our obligation is something that we do routinely that stresses out the character. So it's like bad stuff happens to you during your obligation. Um, it's not like a fun, happy space. So, so after we do the obligation to tell them the role and background, what is the next step? I'm sorry. Um, assign one extra action rating on your sheet that relates to your role. And where are the action ratings? Um, so on these character sheets, they are listed. Are they other things on the right? On the far right, yeah. So okay. there's the broad categories of Moe, Tsundere, and Kudere. And then <laughs> the actions are confess, forgive, perceive, express, defy, empathize, and conceal, analyze, and flow. And I can rattle off what they all mean if now is a good time for me to do that and i won't be distracting anyone from their typing uh no that, that's okay but um so i guess on my enigma sheet it says i have a dot in express and a dot in conceal mm -hmm. so i would just kind of put those over in here and then add one extra anywhere i wanted to uh in any of the ones that don't already have a dot in them okay so you're gonna have Got three it. ratings at one at the start okay cool um, and if it won't bother folks that I just talk while you're doing this, I'll just go through what the actions all are or remind folks of what the actions are. Um, so there is confess. When you confess, you expose the inner world of your thoughts and feelings to another. Um, and then forgive. You show that you care for someone despite a mistake they have made. Uh, perceive is to see the world as it presents itself without judgment. Uh, express is to use your words with an agenda in mind. Um, defy is muster your courage and face opposition head on. Empathize is to understand a person intuitively and feel their emotions as if they were your own. Conceal is to hide your true intentions and feelings. Um, flow is to move with grace and adapt to your circumstances. And analyze is to search beyond the surface presentation of the world and discover secrets. Mm. What was confess again? Confess is to expose the inner world of your thoughts and feelings to another. Hmm. And so it, yeah, like by that being an action, the game kind of makes a statement about the fact that like that people doing that matters. No one will just like ignore you completely if you spill your guts at them. That will always kind of have an impact and be significant. Do we want to talk about what our starting um like what what who's got dots and what so that we can like i don't want to like we don't want to meta game this too hard but like so we can try and make sure we get a good spread and not like yeah, everyone like, is like everyone has express or whatever i was like i should take a point in flow because it's a really like like in in previous games we've played flow comes up a lot mm. but instead of taking one in forgive because my character probably has a bit of a modern complex yeah. So I my my starting dots are confess and forgive because I'm the unlikely hero, and then uh, because my role is weary caretaker, I well one of my roles is I've taken a dot in empathize. Cool. So those are the things that I'm good at. And Kira, you started with express and conceal, and did you pick a third one? Yep. 
Um, I was thinking confess because that would be really complicated, but well, I think I changed it to empathize because I I like the idea of feeling other people's feelings. <laughs> yep, totally. Uh, and so the like three actions that most directly work for gather information are empathize perceive and analyze those are the most like clear ways to do it um and they're going to give you different kinds of information because perceive is about seeing the world as it kind of wants to be seen seeing the like surface presentation of things uh mm -hmm. it's a more optimistic and less cynical view than say analyze which is about picking at things and looking for secrets and hidden information um, it has a more cynical outlook because it assumes that there are secrets already when you analyze. I didn't really, I thought empathize might be more of a interactive with other people type of thing. Is there another one that is more interactive with people? Empathize can be kind of both, I feel like. Yeah, like you can use it to just like gather info about someone and just be like, I want to know what they're feeling. I can empathize with them. But it's also a way to like uh, make things happen. Um, okay. Yeah, like okay. It's, it's not limited to that, but... And like totally. I could see people using other stuff to gather info as well if they wanted to describe that appropriately. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I could see you like approaching someone and being like, Oh, I can tell they are upset about something and then uh, you know, rolling your replies to do that and then engaging in conversation with them about that. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. And then something that i'm really interested to explore with this series uh is that it is a lot less combative than because i've done, a, bu I've done yeah. a bunch of the like mecha one lately which is very like it's very much in the spirit of fight 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 kiss 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 there's lots of like <laughs> action and then feelings and then action and then feelings um whereas this one is going to be more like going to do action sequences without feelings this is more like exploratory I guess, and about like looking for information and talking to people and we can all do dream parkour if that helps. We can just I, and I mean like yeah, some people might like want to take flow and do cool like dream acrobatics and whatnot, and that's totally great. And there's space for that as well, but cool. it definitely skews in a different direction, right? Like the the actions that you can get by taking crew advances are forgive, express, and conceal none of which are very like actiony things um yeah so i start with uh perceive and defy um i was thinking of taking empathize but since we already have two people taking it <laughs> yeah who needs empathy anyways i mean i guess i can easily switch to confess i was thinking about that first. um i was also thinking about conceal um because of my background mm. Mm. And because of my kind of concept as well, to some degree, concealing my feelings. Mm -hmm. You're hiding things from yourself. Yeah. Already. You seem so. very concealing. I was also thinking about analyze, just in terms of the other part of my role is the, is the oracle of the dream. So I feel like. Right. Mm, the like deductive. Perceive, perceive seemed like it fit, but now it sounds to me like perceive isn't really about kind of having insight to like underlying things, which I think is something I'm interested in. So. Cool. I'll probably take conceal or analyze. Cool. I'll also be bad at empathizing, but I'll do it all the time. It'll be great. Yeah. Also, Daniel, if um, if that switch is significant enough, like, is that enough to push you out of wanting to be the guardian, or does the guardian still appeal to you? No, no, no. I like. Okay. I like this guy. Cool. Just checking, because it would be totally fine for people if they need to change it up. I'm not going to make you commit. I'm not going to chain you to a playbook yet. That comes later in the kinky part. I'm sure I can figure out ways to cynically perceive things. Don't worry. <laughs> I invite you to try. Oh. No one said anything about a kinky part of this game, Andrew. You need to get consent up front. Gosh. Sorry, my bad. Uh, okay, so let's go back to character playbook procedure. So people who have assigned action dots, your next thing will be to choose one special ability and one transcendent ability from your playbook. Is a special ability core a core ability? ability? Or sorry, core ability, yeah. Let me just update my document here. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Un unless you are me, in which case you do not get to take a transcendent ability. No. You're still special. I feel like my character was an unlikely hero in season one. Mm. Now you have embraced your destiny. Yeah. 
Well, they're not, like we're at like that was like, so like the first crack appeared in the like in the in the veneer at like in the, the finale of season one. <laughs> and your edge lordy nature has exposed itself. No, oh, no. Uh, and then the next mm. thing after that is making two suspects that are connected to the conspiracy as well as your character. Um. All right, I've decided what I'm taking. What you taking, Luke? I'm so here's the thing. I thought about call out, but then I was like, that leans into the side of the character that they can't accept, which is why they don't have an avatar yet. So I'm gonna save that for later. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking heartfelt. When gathering information about someone's emotions, roll plus one die, and you can always ask a player, "What is your character really feeling?" for free. Great. Op. That's that's pretty strong. Too strong. Nerf this game, Andrew. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I made the unlikely hero too strong. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, so to compensate for the fact I that I can't do transcendent actions. Yeah, they're always going to be a little, like, powder puff that Crappy. everyone has to protect and At things. keep yep. three monsters from gobbling up. I mean, you're just... It's the, it's the Steven Universe or the Madoka thing where there's one character who is both central and important but also like deeply fragile vulnerable and fragile yeah yes it me so but also is angry and wants to fight all the time oh great uh, yes kira <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why that's not i just pictured uh the purple amethyst from the mm. uh, universe and you said that um so should we should I share the core abilities I'm taking or just write them down and then we're gonna share them together later? Um yeah, if you wanna just like call them out as you're taking them, that's totally a good way to do it. Which okay. ones are you excited about? Um well I think I'm going to work from the shadows, which means Ooh. when I currently set up another character's action and roll plus one if they succeed in mark experience. <laughs> right. So you're you're that's able good. to do a lot of pre-work which we can do through like flashbacks and stuff like that you can have already like been ahead sure. of the group doing stuff yeah i i support my friends um then my transcendent ability is the big reveal so the yes. moment you transcend you may choose to immediately disappear and may reappear at any time in the place of your choosing when you surprise your enemies you or your allies gain increased effect on any follow-up actions so I guess it's like a surprise attack and teleportation. <laughs> yep. But more dramatic. Yeah. Melodrama is a big theme for the Enigma. <laughs> I can tell. It's a nightmare. And I had to choose my mask, but I don't know what it is yet. So I guess we'll share that later. Yeah, yeah. Like once something comes to you. So yes, uh, for the audience, the Enigma has a mandatory ability called Behind the Mask which is that their transcendent and mundane selves are lead separate lives. No one knows that they are the same person. Your transcendent self wears a mask. Describe it. So Kira gets to have, gets to give us some flowery description at some point of her character's yeah, cool mask. A tuxedo. Yes, yeah. I'm open. And to... It was on my mood board. If you want, like a lot of, lots of people on my mood board that I linked in discord don't have faces for some reasons. So. Yeah. Masks actually kind of freak me out. Like, um, I went to uh, sleep no more. I don't know if anyone's been to that. You wear a mask the whole time. And, like the masks are creepy. And I don't know. There's something about masks. Like you're not you're not human. Like when you just I don't know. Yeah, the like but, impassiveness of the faces and the yeah. Yeah. yeah you'll have to be creeped out by some of the ones in the Pinterest board then. <laughs> cool. I, I'm open to suggestions for cool mask ideas too, because I I I don't know, I'm not very good at them. It's funny in this series as well because there is the like compounding of identity stuff, which I think we talked mm -hmm. about last time. Like for yeah. the Enigma, they have this like stacking doll kind of thing of like identities within identities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a mundane self and a dream self mm -hmm. and an avatar, which like yeah, yeah. it's very it's very I'm, cool. I'm very complex. I'm made of multitude. <laughs> I wanted I contain, it to be the best friend. I wanted it to be the Forbidden Lover, so it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Where is Lee? I've, been, I've been playing a lot of Caves of Cud recently, and in that game, if you are, if you have 
the ability to dismember, if you have the dismember ability and then you attack yourself, you can possibly cut off your own face. And then if you then have the healing ability, then you would you would recover from that and then you can wear your own face on top of your face. No. <laughs> Hard no. <laughs> yeah. Red card. <laughs> I mean, that's okay, actually, to describe. It's just like, whoa, super Hannibal, serious things going on. I yeah. love Hannibal. And I suddenly, Hannibal. it was very Kira, Hannibal. we should talk about the Monster Heart skin that uh, Tafcat Taf -Cat and I are designing for playing, like, Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal like, is, like, too heavy for a monster. Cool, man. Oh, Tell me about the wheel. <laughs> We're drifting. Who's next? Who else picked yeah. Kira to leave? Oh, uh, I have. Oh no, Ash, you. Okay, sure. Um, uh, so I have taken reckless. When you make a desperate roll, you may choose to get plus one dice from the roll, but you also take minus one dice for any resistances. Of course. <laughs> and yep. I've good at getting yourself into trouble and bad at getting out of it. Yeah, yeah. Typically. Exactly. And I've also taken indomitable. When transcended, each of the other crew members counts as your rival. Oh great. <laughs> What does that mean, like, in the mechanics? Do we have to fight? So, like, what, a lot of the... Rival? It means she of, wants uh, to fight. Yeah. We don't necessarily. Um, basically, a lot of the uh, other outsider moves have things that interact with... They're always about your rival. Your rival. You'll notice that I didn't pick the moves that actually... The stuff that will still mm -hmm. matter, though, is there are a bunch of, like, gather info questions that relate to your rival, which yeah, will open yeah, up to yeah. you, and then as you take other advances, yeah. But yeah, I like I liked the thing of, of, like, not getting any special abilities out of everyone being a rival. I mean, you can just play into it super hard, and that's quite all right. Um, yeah, later she can, like, destroy a thing between her and her rival and stuff like that. There's a bunch of really... For... The Outsiders are very forceful playbook. It's Andrew, there are two little... There are two transcendent abilities called Indomitable. Is that intentional? That is an accident. Yep. That's oh, yeah. Let, just just letting you know. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I feel like the Outsiders <laughs> should probably have a different name. This is, yes. this, is why, this is why you shouldn't play games with game designers, Andrew. I think no. that's... This is why I should. I, I mean, that, that's me, so. that. There was also that, um, and of course, that's just a copy pasta thing because I stamped all yeah. the character sheets down. Probably. I have a question. Yes, Ash. Which of our characters? What are our characters? Not not sleepy time, gender presentations. Um, if I'm playing a character mm. who's not sleepy time. Gender presentation is pretty. It's somewhat mask. Hashtag mask. Yeah, I was, I was thinking, um, um, I was thinking uh, androgynous or Futch, like somewhere right in the middle. But I don't know how to describe it yet. Uh, I'm a girl. Nice. And my character's a girl in real life. I think my I think my character is either. Either presents as and identifies as uh, a boy or a girl, and part of their big fuck the man arc is going to be fuck the gender binary specifically. But I haven't I haven't committed to an end of the binary yet. Cool. The reason I ask is I'm trying is I'm trying to pick my um my rival, and I'm trying to work out who would be like. Yeah. Doing which 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 like fem it. yeah which fem member of the team do you resent yeah, for I'm having trying, what you can't have? Yeah, I'm trying to choose between. Yeah, um, I think it might Probably actually not. be. Yeah, but at the same time, like, I feel like, uh, I feel like if your character is, um, like, are we are we feeling like AFAB or, um, and moving in that direction or, because there's that thing of like. You get to wear, you know, you, you get to be butch and not have it come with all these assumptions, or vice versa. Or I can just, uh, or I could be like leaning towards Daniel's character. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, an Ash, an Ash. Oh, sorry, Kara, you. No, 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 go ahead. 
if if you want a like character successfully performing masculinity to be your rival, which like is another option that could make sense. Like I could go there. My a no. lot of my character is still in flux. So yeah, no, I think I want someone who's either successfully performing femininity or their assigned birth gender allowing them to like transgress who, yeah who is successfully like, yeah being cool yeah. with relation to gender yeah. i think yeah. i think i think that my character cool. is, uh, is probably a fab but not necessarily recognizably as such. yeah right they actually really do pass yeah, um, yeah, yeah. either way w w yeah. despite the way they're driving. like they yeah. you know they or, yeah which is probably like slightly too like slightly past where um where my character would be aiming and yes like, it's you know, less like... it's less butch if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah and more like i think just yeah more like androgynous i don't yeah. know the right word for it yep. i think yep. that's the best word maybe it's um, is it the kind of thing kira where if your character chooses to dress a certain way people will change how they like what pronouns they use towards you like they'll kind of yeah. default differently yes yeah like if she wears lipstick suddenly she yeah uh, you know or you know if from behind you know they, they they might even have long hair but they're dressed like a, a boy oh that's a boy yeah if they wear the right shoes and the right type of shirt or whatever to cool uh -huh. yeah. totally yeah 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 so daniel are you successfully performing femininity i mean yes i'm successfully performing femininity i don't think i uh, my character's not a rebel in her femininity, but like no one would, certainly wouldn't mistake my character for anything but a girl. Um, she's kind of too angry and messed up right now to be like performing femininity in a conscious way, at least. But uh, yeah, right. I just picked a character portrait actually, so I'm gonna still be uploading it in a second. Cool. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make I'm gonna I'm gonna be jealous of of. Um, of curious characters like fluidity and <laughs> cool. that seems like a really sent, like logical thing for your character to latch onto as being a thing yeah. to like want and resent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the absolutely. fact that the fact that like you can make you just fun. get to decide, whereas other people what the fuck? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. It is well, a privilege. Here, you're my rival. Yay. Hey. Like in real life, like we're rivals, Ash. Uh oh, <laughs> game designer right. beef. I mean, uh, I mean, look, they're both they're both like kind of cyborg, uh, like queers. No, no, they no. can only Ash, be one. Ash is in the monster. I'm monster. That's monster camp. She's monster type. That's fair. Yeah, that's oh. fair cyborg type. Um, I just heard a monster game, so. Okay, that's where the beef comes from. It's like a turf <laughs> war. Okay, I can't say turf <laughs> war in this context. That gives it a different connotation. Um, territorial dispute. <laughs> there we go. Luke clicked. <laughs> what just happened? I made Fuck a turfs. Seriously, I made a pun about turfs. Yes, oh, turf with an e wow. versus turf with a u. Oh, oh wow! Oh, I totally missed it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good, Andrew. Yeah, I'm impressed. Oh. Any turf jokes are good. Turf jokes. Yeah. Every so, is a joke. So I, can I? I uploaded my a character portrait to my character. Can other people actually see that though? Nope. So if I go to your sheet and <laughs> not look, unless yes. Andrew shares it with us. No, okay. I can see it. Uh, Andrew, yeah, you can. Yeah, but we can't we can't see the sheet, Andrew. So that we so that our each so that oh. each person's thing appears in all players' journals, but it's only edited all by one. Right. So can be edited and controlled by Daniel, can be seen by all players. Here we go. Yeah, mm -hmm. there we go. Hey. So how, how do we hey. our names? Oh nice. Yeah. We just pick them. <laughs> um, so there is a name list uh, on the series playbook. And then if you want to change the name that appears in the character sheets, like it's entry under edit. on Roll20, yeah, it's under edit. That's also I... where you can attach an image and stuff. Yeah, like no, that, how to fix that for character so... sheet, um, Andrew, so that's the oh, thing. Nice. Is. I'm into it. So I, I, I also have, I forgot about, I also have a special, like, mandatory ability. Yes. Yes. Just called That's why own, you... only mortal. I can't have special armor, and I can't transcend. I get an extra action during downtime. I get plus one die when I roll the social link action. So I'm real good at sharing intimate moments with people. 
And when only I can save one of my friends from fatal harm or severe consequence and I do it, I lose this move and I gain Hero's Destiny and I become real cool. But I haven't done it yet. Yeah. Cool. Red. That comes later. Yeah, that comes later. I'm working I'm working on it, everyone. I'm working on it. Okay. Um Where so, are we for break, Andrew? Um, do you wanna like yes. break and come back? I'm getting totally zeroed in on all this stuff. So yeah, we're going to go to break. Uh, we'll be back in, we'll take like a five, ten minute break. Uh, so hang tight chat and we'll see you soon. I just say this full 20 